Boom. Who's ready? I'll just start talking then. All right, action. Okay. Action. Ha! Ah, hey. Hi. <laughs> I have such fond memories of having this dish with you. And in fact, like, we kind of cooked this dish with Zoe. Uh, we fully did. On her menu. This is called Kalbi Jim, right? Mm-hmm. Kalbi referring to the short ribs and jim referring to a braise. Whenever you hear any dish in Korean ending with jim, it means that it's a braised dish. Do you remember when she told us about like searing them? Yeah. Versus what you would normally see, which is boiling the meat. Right, you'd blanch it. She opted for the very Western approach, which is the deep, hard sear, the crusty outside of the meat. And she does it to great effect. I just remember how special it felt. You know, kalbi jim in the context of a Korean meal being like, This is like feast food, right? To me, in my experience, it feels as special as like, you know, the $100 ribeye. You're not whipping that out on a Wednesday night. You're doing that for a birthday. You're doing that for some kind of festive celebration or special occasion. Yeah, so it's like, that's what I associate it with. Yeah. Like birthdays. My kids are getting restless in the background. I'm going to throw some lunch in the oven for them and I'm going to get going uh, with the recipe in a sec. Okay, well, I guess I'll talk to you in a few hours then. All right, yeah, I'm gonna get this going, get it in the oven, and then um, you can hang out with me while I, while I eat <laughs> short ribs for four for one. Um, Great, can't yeah. wait. Cool. Can't wait. I'm just throwing this in the oven now, and then I'll bring over my knees, and then we'll cut in like a few minutes when I go and bring this in. Do whatever you need to do. I just did it, it's already done. Gotta stay ahead. All right, great. I'm gonna get into some quick prep. I'm just doing a rough chop on this onion. It's just going into our braise as part of our aromatic base. Certainly does not have to be perfect here. So our ginger, we're just gonna peel it and then do eighth of an inch thick slices. No, I'm not peeling the ginger with a spoon. I just, sometimes life's just a little too short, you know? So our eighth of an inch thick slices. And this can go actually right on top of my onion because it's gonna go all in at the same time. All right, now eight cloves of garlic. A lot of garlic, a lot of flavor. Garlic has been crushed. Just gonna measure out our sugars here. Real talk, I don't have light brown sugar. I've got dark brown, big whoop. Honestly, it's not gonna make a big difference, all right? So quarter cup of that. Now, one thing that we just could not get, mirin. So it's sweet Japanese rice-based cooking wine. Ultimately, Mirin's giving you a little bit of acidity, but mainly sweetness. We were gonna have a half a cup of that. Let's say two tablespoons of white sugar. We're just kind of spitballing here, but I feel like that's maybe about what you might get from half a cup of mirin. You're never gonna have like every single ingredient you'd like to have these days, but the important thing is to just keep going. All right, like that's it. I think we're just about ready to move to the stove. All right. So let's talk. These are flanken cut bone-in short ribs. There's something about the flanken style. The meat shrinks off the bone a little bit less and everything stays intact a little bit better, I think. So pot is heating. I'm gonna lay out these short ribs and I'm gonna season them generously with salt, making it rain, turning. So I wanna turn them at least a couple of times and season most, if not every side. Just enough oil to coat the bottom of the pot there. We're gonna do these in two batches. So everything's got room to breathe in there. That level of color is what we're going for. That's gonna be a lot of the flavor development that happens in this dish. So it's super important to take your time at this stage. All right, so we're gonna do the rest. We're gonna transfer them back into that same baking sheet and then we're gonna do our aromatics. All right, stay with me. That was our first batch of short ribs. That's the level of sear we're looking for. This is the second batch, just about finished. One more turn should do it. You just wanna be mindful that the fond, you know, those brown bits on the bottom of the pot aren't getting black. You just don't wanna burn them, all right? But we're good to go here. So I'm gonna transfer these out. If there's like crazy amounts of fat in the pot, you can take some of the fat out. That's, That's reasonable. So I'm just stirring this around. This is our garlic onion and ginger. Again, just be mindful, turn down the heat as needed. So we're gonna let that cook out till it's nice and jammy. Then we're gonna throw in our wine on top of that. We'll come back in at that point, all right? So all those aromatics are just nice golden brown around the edges. Here's where our red wine goes in. Two cups of that are gonna go in and increase the heat. It's really important whether you're cooking with red or white wine 
to cook it out. If you don't do that, you will taste raw alcohol at the end. It's not a good thing. It's just not a flattering sensation. All right, cool. We're about halfway reduced on our red wine here. So it's at this point that our combination of brown sugar and white sugar are gonna go in here. I'm just gonna stir those in, make sure they dissolve. Brown sugar has that tendency, you know, to clump up and just be annoying. Then we have third of a cup soy sauce. So that's gonna go in. It's dark in there. It's already kind of inky, you know, between the soy and that reduced red wine. It's, it's looking pretty cool. So at this point in the recipe, we would also be putting in a couple cups of water just to kind of bring the liquid volume up around the short ribs. I'm gonna maybe plan to throw in a cup. We'll see if we need the two cups, we'll use it, but work with me here, okay? So ribs are gonna go into this pot, single layer. I wanna get as much of the meat as low as possible in the pot. Does that make sense? Maybe that doesn't make sense at all. I don't even know if that made sense to me. So rather than having the bone down, have the bone up or on the side. That way you know that your meat is what is being submerged there. Again, it's gonna continue to lose some of its liquid. So if everything doesn't fit perfectly in an even layer, it's gonna be okay. So I've got like one straggler who just doesn't really wanna find a home, but that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna nestle him in. All right, nice. So see how we could use a little more liquid in there, right? So I think a cup of water will do it. I can always add more water during the cooking process, but I'd prefer not to have to reduce the liquid on the back end to get a nice glazy sauce. So we're gonna bring it back up to a simmer now that the water's in there, make sure the cooking process is actually going. So I'm gonna monitor this, especially in the very beginning, just to make sure that the heat level is appropriate. I wanna see active, bubbles but not violent bubbles i want it to be blub 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 does that make sense cool daikon radish i'm gonna peel it i'm gonna cut it into one inch pieces drop it in there about an hour before the meat is done braising let me tell you a story about this daikon it was very hard to find this okay rhoda boone culinary producer extraordinaire she found this and she messengered this daikon to me because she knows how much i love daikon in honor of rhoda you know what changing the title on the fly. This is now braised daikon with short ribs. Kind of just kidding. But seriously, thank you so much, Rhoda, for finding me that daikon. All right, uh, so everybody's going to sign off. And then what time are we going to come back in? Let's check in around four and I'll tell you how it seems like we're doing. It may be kind of like a five o'clock situation. All right, so we're back. We've been braising the short ribs about three hours. Yeah the steam, all that jazz. They're just about fork tender. They could definitely use another minute. I've got rice going. And I've got my table just about set with all of our other garnishes. But before we do that, we are here to make egg ribbons. I haven't done this for a year, so I may blow it. So just bear with me. So egg ribbons, it's just literally scrambled egg rolled and then sliced into thin ribbons just as a fun garnish. It's just, it's just joyful. Hey guys, I feel like I hear you. I feel like we talked. Mr. Komodo Dragon, Mr. whatever you are, Mr. Where's Aardvark. Guys, I'm about to make egg ribbons. So everybody needs to chill. We're going to crack one egg. We're going to lightly beat it. Okay, maybe that wasn't the lightest beating, but you know what I'm saying, mix it well. All right, so a teaspoon of neutral oil in our nonstick. Just gonna spread that around. While I add the egg to the pan, we're gonna tilt it, almost like we were making a crepe, okay? Just try to get this into a rough circle. <laughs> Can I redo this egg ribbon? Okay, we're doing, we're redoing the egg ribbon. Quiet on set. This is take two on egg ribbon. First time, honestly, I don't even know what that was. Takes a lot to get something to stick to a nonstick, but we, we did it. Okay, a little hotter, a little more heat. This is good because I'm buying a little bit of time. I didn't really mess up the egg ribbon. I was just buying time on the short ribs, honest. Yeah, great, here we go. Okay, that went a lot better. So basically that was like, you know, 30 seconds, scrambled egg set in an even layer. Don't mess with it, don't move it around. And then we're gonna turn it out, trying to keep it in one piece so we can roll it up. We're gonna slice it crosswise, egg ribbons. So rest of my garnish is at the table. We'll talk through that when we get over there, but I think we're good to go. Awesome. It's all coming together, finally. It's a, it's a wild crap and I'm getting it. Hi, <laughs> this morning was a lifetime ago. Yeah, can I talk you through what I have here? 
Talk me through it. All right. So I have the braised short ribs, which are looking pretty dynamite. Then we have like some pretty fun toppers. I have kimchi, silgochu. Then we have egg ribbons. Lovely. And then we have our sliced scallions. And I made rice. Boom. Oh, before I make a plate, can I have a a drink of wine with you? Yes, yes. I thought that was the first thing you would have done in your plating. (laughs) What are you drinking? So this is really, really lovely. Bright Cellars Cabernet Sauvignon. Worst Evils is their label on this. It's a big Napa Valley cab. I was explaining to these guys, like, big flavor food, big flavor wine, you know? It's so true. Hmm. All right, sorry. So now I'm, I'm going to make myself a dish. And now I have to apologize that you can't partake in this. Let's, we're going to see how we did here. Yum. I'm just responding to the sound of like a fork and knife hitting a bowl. Mm. That's the sound of a great kabichim. No sound at all. Because it's so soft. Happiness. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Excuse me, we can hear everything you're doing. Everybody can hear. They don't care. What are you doing up there? What are you getting? No, 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 no. No, no. Hey guys, will you do a cheers with me? Apple juice, cheers. Yeah. Okay, let's do a cheers, okay? Because I think we did a really good job today. Well, I did a really good job today. (laughs) Christina. Cheers. Thank you for hanging out basically all day, waiting for my short ribs to braise and then not having them. Hey, guys, everybody's going to do a cheers gently. Two hands. I'm not doing it. Are you, wow. Wait, but if you're going to drink the juice, right? You have to do the cheers to drink the juice. Where are you going? No. Come back here for the cheers. Hey, it's going to spill everywhere. I'm like, <laughs> Daddy! Give me a cheers. <laughs>